Hello everybody, I am Tiffany and I am back to share with you some Tiffany tips or maybe more so some Tiffany experiences. So in my last video, I touched in my, touched in, what? I touched on my labor and delivery experience and also my postpartum hemorrhage experience and what that was like to go through that. Um, so if you haven't already, you can check that video out. Um, so this week I'm going to talk about me being a carrier for something called alpha thalassemia. So alpha thalassemia is a blood disorder. I'm looking at my notes real quick because I know what it is, but sometimes trying to say it when you're thinking it versus looking at it is a lot easier. So alpha thalassemia um, is a blood disorder that reduces the production of hemoglobin in the body. Okay. So growing up, I always thought that I had the sickle cell trait. I was told I had the sickle cell trait. You know, I always had issues with my iron. So I was supposed to um, take an iron supplement, but I was not consistent in taking it like I should have been. Um, so um, I was considered to be anemic, right? So um, when I found out I was pregnant with baby girl number four, um, you know, they ask you all your history and all the good stuff and they do blood work. So, um, I was telling me, you know, I'm pretty sure my iron's going to be low. It's always low. I have a sickle cell trait, right? So my blood work comes back and they're like, um, no, you don't have a sickle cell trait. And I'm like, hmm, I don't. Number one, I'm like, okay, why hasn't, I've had three babies prior to this and I tell them all the same thing and no one's ever told me that I don't have the trait. So I don't have the trait is, okay, what do I have, right? It's just affecting my, my iron. You're making it so low. So like, we're going to do some additional um, testing. So I'm just like, okay, so do the additional testing, probably like maybe four days go by and they call me and they're just like, okay, well, like we said, you know, your blood work and everything came back normal. You don't have a sickle cell trait, but you do have something that is called um, alpha thalassemia. You're a carrier for it. And I'm just like, Whoa, okay, what is that? And how is it going to affect me? How's it going to affect baby? So just like, oh, it's nothing you should really be worried about right now, but we're going to go ahead and set up um, an appointment for you to see a genetic counselor. Y'all, okay, listen. When they say see a genetic counselor, I just automatically just felt like something was wrong. You know, I've never had to have genetic counseling before. Like, and you can't tell me anything over the phone. You got to set an appointment to come in. I'm just like overthinking and I'm, my anxiety is like at 10. So I'm just like, okay, let me calm down. I'm in the medical field. I got doctors at my disposal. Let's ask questions, right? So I'm asking them. I'm like, y'all, look, I got a phone call. They said, I'm a carrier for alpha thalassemia. What is this? I've never heard of it before, right? So just like, you, you're spazzing out for nothing. It's okay. It's it's common. Like they said, it's common um, amongst African Americans and people of Asian, Asian descent. So I'm just like, okay. And they're like, you're a carrier for it. So that's fine. You know, you have you may have no symptoms at all, or you may have a little bit, you know, be considered anemic and you have to take iron supplements. So I'm just like, okay. So uh, since I was um, considered a carrier, dad had to be tested also just so we could see um, because somehow it affects like if you're um, a carrier for it and there's somebody else that's a carrier for it, there's a possibility. Um, I think if you're a carrier and other person's a carrier, there's one one gene and then one gene, one gene's missing from yours. It's like a, a thing of four genes, right? And one gene is missing from one, and one gene is missing for the other from the other that makes you a carrier. And there's a possibility that it, you could transfer it to your baby, and either the baby can be a carrier for it and have no symptoms, or they can get mild um, symptoms, and they can have like you know mild, you know they can have like anemia. Um, but I don't think it's severe. Like I don't think it's a, it's a bad because there's alpha major and that's like the the bad like it's high and that's that's that that wouldn't be good for her um, babies who are affected with the alpha thalassemia that's um, major um, it's called fetal high drop syndrome and um, those babies um, usually don't make it like they end up either stillborn or they die soon after birth. Um, and so with us being carriers, we didn't they, we, we didn't fall into that category. Like they say, we didn't have anything that we needed to worry about. So I was like, okay. Um, so yeah, dad ended up being a carrier. I was a carrier and they were just trying to prepare us like, okay, baby girl, when she gets here, it, she's gonna probably be a carrier and she either will have no symptoms or she'll have mild anemia. So I'm just like, okay. So we continue through the whole pregnancy and everything. I'm taking my arm like I'm supposed to, and they're checking it consistently just to see where it is. And I know before I delivered her, they said it was it was doing really, really good. It wasn't as high as, it wasn't considered normal, but it was good for me considering it had been so low um, during the whole pregnancy. 
And another thing I'm wondering is, I've had three babies before this, right? Why haven't any of the other providers said anything to me about this? Like, they did the same blood testing. You know, I told them all, okay, I'm a carrier. I'm, well, not a carrier, but I have a sickle cell trait. But none of them took time to whatever. It just, I was like, wait a minute. You know, this is baby number four, and I'm just not finding out about this. What the heck are my other providers doing? Makes you wonder, huh? But, so anyways, I ended up having her. And, of course, they have to do, like, the newborn screen. So do the newborn screen, all the stuff that check her for jaundice, um, you know, all that, that, that good stuff. And so when I took her for a one month appointment, the pediatrician um, had got her new her results and everything over from the hospital. And they were like, and so we're going to give you this paperwork and everything came back normal except for her hemoglobin barks or her the alphalacemia. She she's a carrier for it. And I was like, oh, OK, so now what are we going to have to do? So they were just like, you know. Um, at four months, we're going to do blood work. And then again, at six months, we're going to do blood work. And we're just going to see where she is to determine whether she is anemic and if we're going to have to give her an iron supplement also. But they say the worst case scenario, that she's just going to be anemic like I am and going to have to, you know, have an iron supplement. So that was just my uh, story on that. Um, I'm doing well. Baby girl's doing well. Everybody's, you know, doing well. Um... If you haven't had a chance yet, like I said, go back and watch my last week's video, but also check out my blog that I did. I had um, another parenting um, pregnancy um, site hit me up. Should I say hit me up? Yeah, they hit me up. And um, they were, they did a study on the impact that COVID-19 has had on mothers. Um, there is, and the site is huggable.com. I'm not going to say the person's name because I don't know if they would want me to, but there's someone that works for that company and they hit me up and they were just like, Hey, we feel like your readers and your audience will be interested, you know, in this survey and the study that we did on how COVID-19 has impacted their relationship with their children. And come to find out that, um, it's had positive impact. More and more mothers have been able to spend more time with their children. Even mothers who work full time have had more time to spend with their children. Um, and so I did a blog about that. And I think I'm going to come back um, next week and do a video on it. Like I said, I did a blog, but I can do a video also. I kind of think, you know, doing both is is helpful. Yeah, some people who like to read, some people who like to watch videos. So I think I'm just going to um, probably do both. Well, I've already done the blog, but I'm going to come back and do the video as well. And I can say that I do agree. I feel like uh, that this whole pandemic has had a positive impact on myself and on the way that I um, am parenting my children. Um, I feel like we've grown closer. Um, not to say they don't get on my nerves because they still get on my nerves, but I feel like we've grown, grown closer. I feel like our conversations are better. I feel like um, I understand them more as individuals. Um, and like I said, I touch on that in my blog, but I'm going to also come back and um, talk about it in next week's video. So if you could please like, comment, share, and please subscribe, y'all. Subscribe to my channel. <laughs> I feel like I'm begging, don't I? Subscribe to my channel, please. Um, but yes, that's all I have to say for this week. I'm going to get out of here. I have some things that I need to um, work on. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a good rest of your week.